Ooh, Coast Redwoods or Sequoia Sempervirens are incredibly beautiful, amazing, awe-inspiring trees, some of the tallest trees in the entire world. Natively, they grow on a narrow coastal band from mid-California up to southern Oregon. These gorgeous trees have not only specifically adapted to life on the coast here, but they've evolved in a way that actually creates perfect growing conditions, not only for themselves, but all the others that call these forests home, becoming a sort of ecosystem engineer in their own way. This part of the coast is known for its fog, which you, know, you can kind of see creeping through the forest up here, which precipitates often from solar radiation over the ocean that evaporates water, which then cools in the evenings and condenses into a thick blanket of fog. Now these redwood forests here, with their great heights, reach upwards towards the sky with their complex crown, which increases friction and air resistance. And this boundary layer created by their canopy works to slow wind and catch that thick fog coming in off the oceans, which lingers in their canopies instead of being whisked off by stronger winds higher up. These trees are able to conduct foliar uptake or the absorption of atmospheric moisture in that fog to conduct photosynthesis, as well as bark uptake where their porous bark absorbs that moisture high up and transports it into their xylem. Additionally, when this moisture here condenses on their leaves, it can fall through the canopy to create localized rain events that keep the understoil and soils nice and damp here so that all these ferns and everything else here can thrive. While this fog is primarily driven by the sun and ocean during drier times, these complex forests are also known to release high amounts of terpenes or volatile oils that give hot and dry forests their characteristic aromatic scent. And these tiny terpenes drift upward and act as nuclei for the formation of raindrops. That is, they are the starting point which moisture collects to and begins to form a cloud. So these trees don't just exist here because it's a niche that they favor. They also work to create the conditions they require to thrive, which I find to be just so dang neat because us silly humans tend to simplify these concepts and look at ecosystems existing in different parts of the world based on atmospheric conditions, geology, or hydrologic trends, but often fail to consider the biotic impacts of these niches, especially when it comes to logging, because if we remove all these forests through clear cutting, instead of closed canopy ecological harvest, we disrupt that unique biological complexity that helps create these forests in the first place. It's all connected. How beautiful is that?